we often hear of FOMO, fear of missing out, right? But what could you be missing out on for being on your phone? Yep, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So let's get right to it. But we all know what FOMO is, fear of missing out, right? I've been guilty of it. I'm always like, oh, what's going on? What's going on that I can't engage upon because I am doing something else? It's really, really frustrating that we can't duplicate ourselves or clone ourselves, right? However, I often find myself looking at people. Um, I love observing people and I often find myself seeing them on their phone. They're just staring, scrolling, lost in their phone and this was so apparent to me um, most recently because i've been traveling a lot so i've been in airports a lot so i've been waiting for planes a lot and what do most people do be on their phone right it kills time you can be productive you can get things done and you could be missing out on a lot so here let me share with you an example so in one of these said times at the gate waiting for my flight and I am just looking around because my phone is charging <laughs> so I can't be on it per se so I am just observing this family and there were like two three kids I want to say and they were all on their phones right and I'm not knocking y'all for being on your phone we all do it but listen to this so they're on their phone and they're like this and I'm just observing, watching, looking around so I don't look weird <laughs> for staring. But it just like dawned on me, like these kids did not look up at all. So, so finally, I think we have to like um, start preparing ourselves to, you know, line up to board. And one of the kids uh, look up and they see me and they do like a little like startled, like little surprise. And I'm like, I get a little surprised when I see that. I, I live my life like whatever. So when they look at me surprised, it causes a surprise reaction in me. So we have this little moment of like, oh, hi. <laughs> and the boy, the little boy turns around to his, I suppose, siblings. And he's like, they were scurried along by their parents. And they're like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. So the kid is like, oh, oh, oh. He had probably about five, seven, ten minutes where I was sitting in the same gate area as him. Never looked up, but in the last like 20 seconds that he looked up, he saw somebody that perhaps he wanted to say hello to or wave at, and he couldn't because he was consumed in his phone the entire time. So I say this because it dawned on me, what are we missing out by being in our phones? And again, it's all of us. I am not shaming anybody. I am not pointing fingers at Gen Z, Gen Y, Gen Do, Gen D. Who cares what Gen it is? <laughs> we all do it. It is said that those in age 12 to 18 are checking their phones about 82 times a day. I think that's low, but okay, we'll go with statistics, right? That's about what? Math, how many times an hour? There's 24 hours, okay. The math will show up on the screen. <laughs> that's a lot of times. That's more than three times an hour that we're checking our phones. I don't know about you, but I think it's higher than that. Challenge yourself to count to see how many times you actually go into your phone every hour and put it in the comments. I'm curious. We'll have a little discussion in there. But anyway, we go in there to check our likes, our comments, our follower count, and we obsess over it, right? And what does this do? It creates more stress. It creates um, sadness if your post didn't get as many likes as you were convinced it was gonna get. It, it creates um, isolation because you're only in your phone and you're not like out in the world, right? It can create even depression because you're constantly comparing to your friends who perhaps get more likes or your friends who have more followers or maybe even you lost followers that sucks <laughs> you're like yeah I'm going up and then you slide back down and it's like ah right so all these things frustration anger whatever the case may be these are all feelings that we are generating just based on our experience with looking at our phones and social media specifically right 
So I wanted to share with you five ways where we can balance our social media intake. Yay! I'm not saying you have to do a complete detox. I do it like for a few days and some people have done it for months and have reported great, beautiful, amazing results. But that's not what I'm proposing right now. I am proposing a balance. Yes, go figure. A balance in our life when it comes to social media specifically. The reason I thought about this video is because I said in one of my last videos that I grew up in an era, in a time, in a household, in a culture where there was this constant comparison. There was this constant like have to outdo one another when it came to smarts and schools and grades and, and friends, right? And I, and I said that in this video, go check it out, right? I kept it in there because it was true. But then it dawned on me, it has never been more true than now today with social media. It's a constant comparison game and it is debilitating and depressing and deflating, right? When you go on there and a post doesn't perform the way you want it to, it kind of takes a little bit of wind out of your sails, doesn't it? And that over and over and over do you see how that can begin to impede on your progress in life and how you look at life and your outlook on yourself and others it's just a constant snowball effect so when i grew up it was magazines magazines and media right i would spend hours looking at magazines like literally this is what we used to do now you do this right and you just scroll right so it's even more insidious because it's in our hands at all times you have to actively like get a magazine and look through it right now you just pull out your phone and you're looking through all these images right that perhaps can stir up some feelings of envy jealousy, comparison. These are all very normal and typical reactions to our visual stimulations in our phones at any given moment. Truth, right? So now I am going to encapsulate social media as Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, Snapchat, I guess Twitter, X, whatever that one is. I don't know, I don't use it too much. Um, so that's what I'm gonna um, encapsulate as being social media. The reason I don't include YouTube, for me, I use this as a research and education tool. I love, love YouTube for those reasons. I know that when I leave this platform, I've learned something and I've stepped away kind of like um, with a better understanding and I feel like I've grown because I've taken in oftentimes content that teaches something. So that's why I'm not really like including it as far as like social media. However, you can include it if you so choose to, right? So alas, here are the five suggestions I have to balance out your social media intake, all right? So first of all, I always do that. First of all, <laughs> Let's remember that what people are posting is their highlights reel, right? So they are posting best of the best moments. Oftentimes, I know I've done this, I don't know if you'll admit it in the comments that you have, you're like, eh, I'm not gonna share that because it's not like big enough or um, important enough or cool enough or you know splashy enough, right? It's like we kind of like brush our experiences under the rug because we don't think they're Instagram worthy enough. It's like, ouch, I had the experience, I wanna post it, but it's not whatever enough for the platform. So we end up not posting it, right? However, we have to remember that everyone is doing that. Everyone is curating their own phone content to determine whether or not it's cool enough or deemed whatever enough to post, right? So what that means is that not everything you see is real. 
24 7 for that person right you may have seen me uh, posting about my speaking or my book or my Darman videos I don't do that all day every day but I post those because they make me happy and they make you all happy. But that's not like indicative of my 24 seven life, right? That's what everybody is doing. So don't think, assume, judge that because they're doing these things that this is what they do all the time and they have this glorious, amazing life because they show two, three posts that like demonstrate that impression that you perhaps take away from it. So. Just to encapsulate that, remember that it's not always a full representation of the person's real life. So that's how you can get more balance by understanding that this person or people you are looking at, influencers specifically, that's not their entire life, okay? Don't compare to that. Which leads me to point number two. We're all human, we all have experiences, we all have challenges and things we want or don't want more in our life, right? So we must remember that in order to create more balance in our social media experiences. So don't assume that this person doesn't have any issues in their life. They're not posting about that, again, Refer to point number one. They're curating what they deem to be the better things to post about. So remember that, because that makes a big difference, right? It makes us feel less than when we think somebody else has so much more of something. Truth. Which leads me to point number three. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. Just because you deem something to be of higher perception or cooler or grander or more fun doesn't mean that's what it is right we've all heard those stories of you know the celebrities who seem to have it all and perhaps they do but they don't have their privacy they don't have maybe you know true true friends where they don't question you know what their intentions are I don't know, it's a huge generalization, but we can't assume that that grass is greener. And I think Darman did an amazing video where the daughters swap places and me and Tony were um, the moms. And I just love that video because it's true. It makes you realize that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Which now we're up to number four. Okay, this is a suggestion that I think could really work. And I'm talking about social media, again, Insta, TikTok, Snapchat, those kinds of social platforms. And that is to remove your notifications. I don't know about you, but every time I get a notification, it like takes me out of whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, I gotta go do that. Or, oh, what, it, what was said? So just remove your notifications. That way an opportunity to take back control of your time. And you can designate certain times that you want to go on the social media platform. So it's on your own terms, right? Isn't that kind of cool? It's like, yeah, my time, my schedule, my attention levels, I'm going to choose when I go on social media. So for me, this has been a huge game changer. Like I will not go on social media before 2 p.m. It just works for me. I gotta work until 2 p.m. and then I use 2 p.m. as my little reward um, that when I'm done with my work, I can go on social media, which for me has worked out great. There is an exception to this and that is on Fridays, it's different because I wanna put out my little happy Friday moments and all that. So that goes out a little earlier before 2 p.m. because that's when my video goes out. So that's the only exception, but that's Friday, right? On every other day, I do not go on until my work is done. And if it's not done by 2 p.m., I push back my reward of going on social until later on when I feel like, okay, I can take a little break from work and I can go see what's going on in other people's lives. By removing your notifications to Insta and Snap and TikTok helps us reduce 
the dopamine hits that we get every time we see a new notification. So dopamine hits is kind of like our reward system. Like we get excited and we get like this like little rush, like, ooh, something came in. That's what we're trying to reduce when it comes to social media. It's great when you're exercising or when you're dancing or when you're with friends. Dopamine hits, that's like a good thing. That's like our feel good system. But when it's linked to social media, mm, you could see how it could be so debilitating and so distressing and so confusing for all of us because it's hitting a positive side of our brain, but it's a negative thing. Ouch. No wonder we're all messed up. No wonder we're addicted to our phones. No wonder we're always like in there trying to find something. We're trying to get those little dopamine hits. So that's what we're trying to minimize and reduce by doing away with notifications. So try that. It's, you'll get used to it. It's not so bad, I promise you. It's not so bad. And also adjust your schedule. Like make it like a reward that you're gonna go on social media versus social media controlling you. You control when you go on social media. I promise you it is so empowering and it feels so good. And you're like, ooh, at two o'clock I get to go on social. That's kind of cool, I can't wait till two o'clock. So like you get more productive and you're more effective and you wanna work through everything you gotta work through game changer for me. I'm telling you, game changer. <laughs> All right. So here is number five. Okay. This is going to be another little challenge, but it's a fun one. Okay. I am going to challenge you to connect the three or four things to replace your social platforms. So let me explain this. Okay, so you have four social media platforms that we've established are probably like our go-tos, right? Insta, TikTok, um, Snapchat, and maybe Twitter or Facebook, whichever that one is for you. I don't know, whatever. Okay, how about you find four different things that you can do instead of? So instead of connecting to an app on your phone, how about you call a friend and actually connect with them on the phone or FaceTime. You can use your phone for FaceTime. I'll let you do that one, okay? And just have a conversation with them. Instead of like texting, doing it online, like just see them face to face. Like what a concept, right? So that's one way I am going to challenge you and it's a great alternative connection point, okay? Number two connection point suggestion is even higher on the scale. It's to actually meet your friend outside. So if they live on your block, you go outside and you play hopscotch. <laughs> I don't know, that's what I used to do. I was so bad at it. Um, <laughs> or what was the other one? Jump rope. I was so bad at that. I used to always tangle myself. I don't know. But I know you can probably do cartwheels, do gymnastics, play basketball, um, ride your bike if you have a pool and it's warm warm enough, if you like to go ice skating and it's cold enough, you got so many options to get out of your house. And it doesn't have to be far if you don't have a ride, right? I get parents are busy and I don't want to throw something else on them, even though they'd probably be so happy that you suggested versus going on social. So that's on you. But that's another one, like connect with a person face to face. Catch my drift. Do you see a theme here? Do you see a trend? It's more connection, not to your phone, although FaceTime will permit, um, but to people, to humans, to engagement, to, to loved ones. Like, ah, that is so cool. And it's amazing. I promise you, your relationships will be infinitely better. This one takes another level of commitment. So we'll see how you feel about this one. But I suggest connecting with nature. I know, like look up out of your phone and look at the trees and the clouds. I love looking at clouds. Look at the clouds, look at the houses. If you like like oh, this house, I like this and that house, I don't like that. Or look at um, like the different cool like cars. If you're into cars, look at all the different cars on your street. Just connect, okay, that's not nature, but it's outside of your phone, right? So connect to something outside of your phone. Go to a park and just like, 
like lose yourself in just the beauty of what is the world. That one is just incredible and it just grounds you. There's actually um, a technique called grounding. You take your shoes off, you take your socks off and you like put your bare feet on the floor ideally on the ground or in the sand if you're at the beach and that is called grounding ground yourself my loved ones i promise you that grounding will do so much more for your psyche and your mental health than going on social i'm just saying you don't have to do it all the time right but do it more often and let me know in the comments how you feel about these and if you're going to try any of them, which one you try and how it goes. That way we all get inspired about what you're doing. And that is how we do more, be more, serve more in this world by inspiring others. So I'm big on this one. Big on this one. And then here's a bonus one. Go figure, a bonus. So I guess this is number six. So number six is put your social media apps in a folder on your home screen. I know, that way that's not like the first thing you see when you open your home screen. It's like you have to go find the folder and if you tuck it away a little bit further away, you're challenging yourself again to reframe the way you connect with your phone. You can use your phone for pictures or FaceTime or, you know, okay, text. And then, of course, if you still want to take a break, go do it. Take a few days off. So I hope these different ways helped. I, Giovanna, need a little time space away from what the world wants me to consume. And I want to create. Hence these videos, hence my channel, hence my book. Create art, create poems, create jokes, create dances, right? So do more of that and you'll see that happiness and joy and ease and peace and, and just like this like beautiful, lovely, sprinkled energy of just like a breath <laughs> of fresh air will inevitably and ultimately and undoubtedly take form within you and therefore externally because that is what people will now read they'll sense your ease and your peace and your joy and they'll thrive off of that from you versus the I'm just saying. So I ask you again, what are you missing out on by being in your phone on social specifically? You'll never know. But when you lift your eyes Plus. out, let's challenge ourselves to show up in the world more. However you choose that to be for yourself, I'm open to more suggestions. So again, put them in the comments. Let's make this an ongoing uh, dialogue as to how we can help each other do better and get out of social as frequently as we are in social so that we can reduce the comparative narrative that we have internally and in our society. So that's what I got for you today. Thank you again for watching. I gotta tell you, like, subscribe, comment. I've said that a lot. Share, that's the other one. Share me with your friends and family. I hope that together we can all make all our younglings happier in this world. So till next time, I'm excited for us. All right, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's do this. So go watch some more videos. I told you I love YouTube, okay? So I am gonna continue to recommend to watch videos on YouTube because I feel like we learn something. And when you learn, you grow. And when you grow, you just have a different awareness and perspective on the world. And that is ultimately what we are striving to do and have in this world. So, okay, I'll shut up this time. <laughs> All right, bye for now. Big love. So if you like this video, go check out the others. I got lots of videos on this channel, so keep watching.